Hey everyone, it's Mike from Signworks. Um, today I'm going to be doing a technical video. Um, I need to do some maintenance, um, but let me get into what I was having an issue with. Um, every time I did a nozzle check, I was having issues with the yellow and the black, and a little bit of the magenta and the blue a little bit, but not as bad as the black and the yellow. Um, since this is an MP5i, it has shared print heads on both the black and yellow and the magenta and cyan. Um, so the issue that it was is that the black and the yellow were basically mixing. I couldn't get it. Like the magenta did it a little bit. Let's see if I can just focus. Uh, it did it a little bit, but not as much. And I would, it would be repetitive. Like I do it over and over again, trying to clean it, clean the print heads. Um, and it would do it every time. It didn't matter how much of the clean, the cleaning of the print heads or cleaning the machine I did. Um, and I was having issues. Um, and then this is what it looked like when I was doing a test. And again, the magenta and the blue mixed, so it made purple. And then the black and the yellow were mixing. So I was having a lot of issues with trying to get this clean. And I knew it was a cleaning problem. Um, but actually, what I after when I was doing when I started cleaning it, I realized that the wiper um, system wasn't moving back and forth. Um, it basically just stayed in this place. I, it was made it a weird noise too. Um, I could touch it. Uh, when I told it to do a wipe on the heads, I could touch it and move it. And when it got here, it would go back after it was done, but it will, it would not go this way. So basically what I determined is that it was the wiper system was all gunked up with ink. So in the following video, you'll see me take it, uh, see me what was wrong with it and everything like that. And I'll take it apart, show you what was wrong. And this is the clean one. I put it back in. It works good. Um, so this was the problem. Everything is printing clean now, as you can see. Um, this is like the perfect, this is the last one after I just did a clean. This was before I did the clean. Uh, I just did a light clean. Um, so clean, no clean, no clean, clean. And then the whites, again, well, I'll just smear that one, but the whites are also really bright and good. Um, really good ink. No problems with it. So this is the result from all this. All because of the wiper system. So if you are having issues with the MP5i that is doing this and just the regular clean won't fix it, you may need to take it apart and clean it or just get a replacement and drop it in there. Um, so just continue to watch the video. I'll show you more about what I did um, as best I can. And uh, if you have any questions that come up through the video, just let me know, put it in the comments or send us an email or something. All right, hope you enjoy the video. All right, hey everyone, this is Mike from Signworks. Um, today we're gonna be doing a kind of little bit off technical video on the Anajet MP5i. Um, the issue I was having today, um, that we're going to be working on is that the wiper station wasn't moving back and forth to wipe off the heads. Um, this can happen for any number of reasons. One, um, it just, it goes bad. It is a moving part. Things from time to time just stop working after a while. Um, the other part is, is that because ink is getting moved off the print head onto this, the ink will dry and actually cause it to not want to move as well as it should um i believe that's the problem that i was having um even though i'd wipe it and stuff i didn't hardcore clean it um i've already taken it out of the machine uh, i'll show you where it was um but just to let you know it was it was an issue trying to get it out there's a lot of little areas in there um that you have to worry about not hurting or anything like that so I'll bring you in the back in a second to show you the actual component, but right now, this is what, this is where the maintenance, the wiping maintenance station goes, right here. Um, so you have two screws, you got a screw right there and a screw right here, which is a pain trying to get it in this tiny little section. Um, you got to be careful not to um, hit the laser right here. There is the laser, you don't want to hit that. 
And also there's a little notch right here that the motor, the little stepper motor has um, has to set in for the, the motor. Um, that was also a little bit of a pain to get out of there. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you the, the actual wiper station apart. Um, again, I already took it out. Unfortunately, I didn't get to show you taking it out. Um, this is it right here. Um, but as you can see, like right here, where it's got like that gook right there, that's where you don't always look and it kind of got on the back side as well. Right there, you can see it inside. That's where it, it seems to have got it stuck. Um, it will go back on its own. It just won't go this way on its own. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out two screws. We're gonna take out this screw right here and we're gonna take out this one with a hex head right here. Um, unfortunately, I'm by myself today. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to show you all the steps, but I'm gonna do it and then get back on camera and uh, tell you about the process. Oh, but by the way, this drip tray be careful not to break it it has a tiny tiny little plastic piece right there it's hard to see if you're not in focus Let's see if i can get in focus um got a little tiny plastic still hard to see and it broke off it goes inside this little hole right here um I'm going to figure out some way to fix it, um, probably make it a little bit better, a little stronger, because uh, it is a very thin plastic piece. But um, I'm going to get this apart, show you where I'm going to clean, and then um, put it back in. So uh, stay tuned. Now, as I took it apart, um, and actually I'm making a revisement on which screws need to come out. Um, so I'll show you that in a second. Um, this is it apart right here. Okay, now focus in. So this is the this is everything taken apart. There are actually three screws they need to take apart. Uh, this one right here, which is a a five a five sixty fourths uh, hex head. This actually is what connects it to the actual motor. Um, this little one right here, which is let's get it to focus. This is the one that it actually pivots on. And then you need to take out the screw up here, which is the original one I mentioned anyways, so the actual wiper can come out. Um, on the back of it, it has the, the little, if you look at that, that's nasty on the back side of it. So that's why you just need to clean it. Because you can't, you can't see that and you can't clean that just normal to everyday maintenance. Um, but this little gap right here, fits this large bottom part um, so it just sets in there um, when you take this out this this um top part is going to be inside this back right here so it moves up and down so that's how it goes how it moves it back and forth um, it's just gonna you're gonna move it all the way to the right and slide it straight up and it'll pop right out um, so this is how it looks all taken apart. And as you can see the back side that you never ever get to see, that's what it looks like. And that's why we're having issues like we are. So I'm gonna really clean this up really well. See if I can get that in focus. I'm gonna get this really cleaned up and put back together. And then we're gonna see how well it performs now. So uh, again, stay tuned. All right, so now we're all cleaned up. <clears throat> If you remember how that looked before, this is all clean. This is all clean. I mean, look at that back. You remember what it looked like before? I'll do a side by side to show you. Um, and also this part does come out. I didn't mention that before when I was starting to clean. It just pops in there. Just make sure that that groove, when you put it back in, the groove is on the outside. Um, the drip tray, it's pretty clean. Still looks a little wet just from the alcohol that I put on it. Um, but it's pretty clean. 
And then I also cleaned the arm as well. The blade was still good. This was, I cleaned the blade, um, but it's still pretty good. So I'm not gonna worry about replacing it. It does get messy. It does get dirty to clean this properly. Um, so you're gonna need gloves or else you will get messy. Um, I recommend, I use an X-Acto to scrape some of the parts and actually use the, the point to try and pull some of the ink out. Um, but definitely a parts brush is a good friend, but make sure it's a plastic bristle. You don't want to damage anything. Um, the plastic bristle will be, make sure that all these plastics are, are okay. They don't get damaged. Um, and then some alcohol, um, just some rubbing alcohol just to clean it. Um, I recommend in a spray bottle, uh, just spray the part, clean it, spray it, clean it. And you're going to keep doing it until you get all the stuff out, all this nice, beautiful, dried up ink like this this is all the stuff that was attached to the back of it um so this is what you're getting rid of so hopefully if that is your issue that it gets resolved um again i'm assuming that this is my issue after i put it back we'll do a test and we'll make sure that it is um so now i'm going to put everything back together and then we'll take it over to the machine and put it back in thing as i'm putting this back together um, since you are using like alcohol and solvents probably to clean the parts, um, what you want to do is you want to re-lubricate it. So you're going to want some oil so you can re-lubricate these so it goes back and forth smoothly. Um, so I just put a little bit of dab on both sides and then pushed it back and forth. You're going to want to do the same thing for the arm right here so it moves. And um, if you want to put a little bit on this, it, you could, but it probably doesn't need it. But definitely on this arm and on here and um, just to help it move back and forth. So that's just one thing to keep in mind as well. All right, so I got everything back together. Uh, one thing I forgot to say also is that I was, I decided to use screws. Um, see if I can focus in on that. Use some screws for the actual connecting the drip pan back. Um, I got them as flat as possible because I got them as flat as like that. So it doesn't stick out anymore. So I know it won't hit. Um, so these are just some small little sheet metal screws. Um, this one is actually a screw to an old um, CD uh, DVD drive um, that I just had lying around that worked perfectly. Um, and then these screws, they stick out a little more, but it's, it's fine. Um, I mean, they go up in the top areas. Um, and this one, I just wanted it to be short so it didn't actually interfere. But um, it's on there now. It's not moving. It was moving a lot before. Um, and when I noticed that when I took it off, this this little um, plastic rivet, pop rivet, whatever. Um, and then this one were already broken. So basically, it was just teetering like this. This is the only one keeping it in place. Um, so now they're all back in there. Um, it's definitely sturdy now. So, and um, now we can take it out if we have to do if we have to do this again. I can just unscrew the screws and pop this off. I don't have to worry about it. I can put it back and forth. Um, but saying with me saying pop rivets, you could put some pop rivets in it. Um, it'd be quick, and you just drill them out every time you're going to do it. Um, but then that's just one more thing that you have to worry about messing up if you accidentally drill it out too much. Um, so now we're going to put it back in and, um, make sure it works. All right, let's go put it in. Okay. So as I was saying, when I'm taking it out, um, the, the stepper motor, it does need to fit in that little groove. Um, I will have to put the camera down when I try and fit everything in. Um, and then you're just going to be putting the two screws back in that you took out originally. Um, one goes on this side, the other one goes on this side. Um, these screws on the bottom, uh, you don't need to, that doesn't screw into anything. Um, it's mostly just the level. So for some reason this one's pushed all the way in. I don't know why. I think it just did it on its own. Because um, it wasn't that much out before. But 
So we're gonna put it back in and then uh, we're gonna test it. All um, right, so we got everything back in. Everything's screwed in. Um, a couple tips that I'm gonna add to this is one, when you're putting these back in and taking them out, you need a magnetic tip screwdriver. Um, two, to make sure it's lined up because I don't know how, if, if this is level or not, but I'm gonna have to just adjust it after I uh, do some tests. Um, before you take it out, make a mark right here where it lines up so you can know you put it right back in the exact same spot just take a little like stabilo pen pencil um something um nail polish something that's not going to really come off um so you know exactly where to put this back at and then same thing with this side um you can put it on the back side it might be easier to line it up um just also one thing when you if you do use something um, that can wipe off easily when you're cleaning it just make sure not to wipe it off um, so right now we're gonna do a test uh, make sure it's in the right low case we're gonna put this carriage back in gonna secure the carriage carriage secure now we're going to wipe the nozzle and as you see it came across uh, it looked like they wiped it it's got some ink on it so everything should be good to go now so as we continue um, with some of our technical videos um, keep in mind that this is a machine with moving parts it is a computer um, we do get lots of emails and phone calls asking about certain types of maintenance issues and things like that you need to maintain it uh, you need to clean it every day do the nozzle checks um, from time to time flush it out wipe everything down these are things that you need to do daily uh, this is something that I haven't done before um, but as you see, it needed to be done. But this was also after many uses, um, a few years in. But it depends on how much you want to clean it. Uh, so you can get replacement parts from Anajet if you don't want to take it apart and clean it. Um, I recommend, even if you are going to buy a new one just to replace it in, I do recommend taking it out, playing with it. Um, just get the feel of it. Um, because you do need to know your machine. And um, the more you know the machine, the better it will work for you. So, again, we're going to be doing some more videos from time to time. If you have any questions, anything you want to see, anything you want to know, um, just send us an email, give us a call, whatever you need. Just, just let us know. We'll, we'll try to help you out as best we can. All right? Happy printing.